Hey, what's up everyone? John of the Geek here, and today I'm going to be installing Ubuntu Linux onto the Acer C710 Chromebook running the customized Core Boot BIOS. And I have a previous video on how to install Core or flash your ROM uh, with a Core Boot BIOS and in installing Windows. But if uh, Windows isn't for you and you want to um, install native Ubuntu Linux on there, you're going to need your thumb drive that contains uh, the Ubuntu Linux installation. I have a video on that as well. Obviously, it'll be in the description. So uh, once you create your thumb drive and you plug it in, you boot up here, you press escape for the boot menu, you select your USB uh, boot device uh, by pressing the number next to it. Most likely, it's going to be two. Uh, you're going to have to wait uh, for this Ubuntu Linux to boot up. It should take about five minutes depending on your uh, thumb drive here and so once this is all done and up to the uh, first screen we'll continue on from there all right so here we are at the welcome screen and so I want to make note that this is uh, Ubuntu 12.04 and I know that in my video on how to create a USB thumb drive I created a uh, I used the latest version of Ubuntu which was 13.10 but I found it to be somewhat problematic and it had a few crashes and I didn't really want to spend the time to try to figure out why it crashed or anything like that so 12.04 is a much stable version and um, I also want to talk about later on in the video uh, at the end of this video why you might want to do the try Ubuntu and boot straight into the OS uh, versus uh, doing a clean install which is what we are actually going to do now so stick around for uh, that little bit of uh, info at the end uh, as well as uh, info about an upcoming video and so we're going to go ahead and click on install Ubuntu And then it's going to do sort of a uh, prerequisite check to make sure you have enough storage space, that the power is plugged in, that you have the internet. It's good to have all of these things for best results. And then now uh, we're going to go ahead and check download update, updates while it's installing and install third-party software just because uh, if we can get it out of the way, it makes things a lot easier and more convenient and uh, things will have... Uh, much more reliability and we'll be able to work a lot better uh, with the updates all right so uh, it recognizes that I have 12.04 on the hard drive already you might have Windows on there or another version of Linux or something other uh, operating system on here so it's asking if you want to install 12.04 what's on the thumb drive here and I'll, and if you want to run it alongside of whatever existing OS you have on there uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and erase everything and do an install do a clean install you can also do something else and make your own crazy partitions but that's a little bit advanced and so I'm gonna go ahead and click on continue now it's gonna ask you all right what hard drive do you want obviously we only have one hard drive in there and that's my 320 gig and it's gonna wipe everything out and use up the entire hard drive uh, you could use the advanced partitioning tool and only section off a certain amount of the hard drive space there if you want but uh, once you click on install now it'll start installing but uh, the cool thing about this is that while it's installing you're gonna go through uh, the kind of the user setup ex uh, experience and so it's selected uh, it knows where you are based on the internet connectivity it selects your time zone here I'm in Los Angeles and then I'll click on continue and then uh, the keyboard layout you pick whatever it is that you want um, and I'm gonna hit continue then it's gonna ask for the user creation account right and uh, the your name the computer's name you can name it whatever you want you don't have to make it the geek right um, and then you're gonna pick a password and I recommend uh, having a password and not leaving it blank it actually makes it uh, easier if you have to troubleshoot and uh, certain commands will ask for a password if you don't have any password it won't actually allow you to run certain commands right and so I'm going to do a login automatically. I'm the only person using this particular device. Uh, I don't need to require a password to log in and uh, I don't want to encrypt my home folder. Yes, all of this is very secure and safe and stuff like that. But uh, right off the bat, you might have to do some troubleshooting to get things working properly. And when you have uh, passwords to log in or encrypting the home folder, 
it uh, could cause a problem uh, for other programs to talk to each other and you might have to unencrypt and re-encrypt and it just makes things too much of a hassle. So I'm going to leave it alone and just log in automatically. Click on continue. And so it picks, it's um, asking you to choose a picture for your home screen here and uh, it's nice to know that the camera is uh, working in this Ubuntu here as you can see me uh, in the picture there and I'll just go ahead and do take photo and now I have a photo so I'll click on continue and uh, that's pretty much it for the uh, installation process uh, you can go ahead and read up on the Ubuntu OS if you want and we're just gonna go ahead and wait until this uh, boots all the way up to the desktop all right, so the installation is just completed, so we're going to go ahead and click on Restart Now, and it's going to boot up into the desktop. All right, so here we are at the desktop, and you can go ahead and try out any of the existing programs that's installed already, or you can fire up the Ubuntu Software Center, and we're going to go ahead and uh, install some Ubuntu restricted software. So in the search bar, you'll type in Ubuntu Restricted Extras. And it has things like uh, MP3, AVI, MPEG Codex, TrueType, Java, and Flash Codex. And then uh, you might come up with a warning here saying that uh, some things need to be removed and we'll go ahead and click on install anyways and it'll do it for us. Then uh, it will ask for a password and this was a password that we created early on. Right, so type that in. And uh, this should take in between five to 10 minutes to install depending on your internet connection. Make sure that you're connected to the internet obviously. And so when this is done, we'll uh, move on to the next one. And so during the installation process, you might get some uh, user end user license agreements or EULAs. And so you go ahead and click on the accepting the terms, click on forward. This might happen a few times for different programs, so just go ahead and go through that. It's no big deal. All right, so now that it's finished, uh, we can go ahead and install a program to test out the webcam again. And uh, we're going to open up terminal here so you can do search in unity and type in terminal right and it'll be this option here once you fire this up we're going to do sudo apt dash get space install space cheese for the cheese uh, webcam booth and then you're going to authenticate with your password here. It's going to ask you, are you sure you want to install this program? You click on Y for yes. And it's a fairly small program of about 5 megabytes in size. Alright, so now that it's done, we can go ahead and close terminal for now. We'll go ahead and look for the program, Cheese Webcam Booth click on this and here we are again with the webcam so the webcam works um, let's see if video works let's click on video let's hit record this is a test hello testing one two three Johnny the geek here testing the microphone hopefully the microphone is working fine and so we can go ahead and stop record here's the video Let's go ahead and drag that onto the desktop and hopefully the video will play in something with movie player. All right, you can't really hear it. Uh but there is sound. It's very faint though and I don't know why that is exactly.
huh but uh, so it's it's working um, it's uh, the audio works so that means that the microphone is working okay and so that's pretty much it for the testing of the webcam audio as well as the uh, microphone so go ahead and close all of this and let's actually just open up the web browser let's go to the uh, YouTube my YouTube channel we will play a video on there maybe the audio on there will be a lot better oh you know what the mic maybe the microphone volume uh, wasn't up high enough so we'll go to youtube.com slash Johnny the geek Yeah, that's a lot better. Gaming rig. This is going to be a step-by-step -step guide that will be the first of many high-quality videos I can produce. So first and foremost, I'm going to go over the parts list. Alright, so next we're going to check to see if there's any updates. And we'll type in update here. We'll go to the update manager. So once you start that up, it does a search for some updates. And it uh, seems like there's a lot of updates here, 201 updates, 188 megabytes will be downloaded. So we'll click on that to uh, install the updates. And so uh, we'll authenticate now. So while this is updating, I want to mention that if you want to check out uh, my other video on installing Linux programs, uh, even though it's uh, Crouton Linux, it's a very different uh, installation process than I would I just showed you here. Uh, for the most part, those commands and installing those programs should work uh, the same, if not easier and better. Uh, now that you have more of a native running Linux on here, and a link to that video will be in the description, of course. And so uh, that pretty much is it for uh, this particular guide here and now I'm um, gonna tell you a little bit about my upcoming video all right so one last thing before I go I wanted to mention about an upcoming video that I'll be coming out with very shortly after this one is that I'll be flashing everything back to stock uh, Chrome OS and the Chrome BIOS on here specifically and so for those of you who just don't want to deal with this anymore or don't want to do anything uh, I'll also provide my original Chromebook BIOS on here but uh, you know take that at your own risk I don't know if it will work with your actual machine uh, so stay tuned for that video coming out next and in order for me to do this I'll need Ubuntu Linux on here and so remember the part where I mentioned uh, to take note whether or not you can uh, try Ubuntu Linux or install Ubuntu Linux for those of you who don't want to uh, install or go through the whole process of installing Linux on there you might be able to use the try and run and boot Linux live off of the thumb drive and from there uh, flash everything back and so I haven't tried that method but if it works out for you please let me know if it does and uh, you might have to update uh, if you're running live off of that thumb drive update a few things um, to get it working properly before you can flash everything back uh, but uh, we'll just have to wait and see and find out and so stay tuned for that and hopefully this video was informative to you if uh, you get the trackpad working please comment down below let me know how you were able to get the trackpad working right now I've been using the mouse so I don't really use the trackpad anyways but there's probably a lot of people out there that want to know how to get the trackpad working uh, for the most part everything else works Wi-Fi the microphone the speakers the webcam and then uh, the USB ports. Uh, what I haven't tried though is the VGA out and the HDMI out. Um, so for those of you out there who are willing to experiment uh, with this, uh, please let me know if those ports work. Anywho, uh, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys later.